making and repairing Ethernet cables is an important skill for the maintenance engineer. It's a simple, if sometimes rather fiddly task that requires just a few tools. A rule, a tester, some RJ45 connectors and crimpers, some side cutters, and ideally a sharp knife. Today we're going to be making a patch cable or a straight through cable. And as you can see there, there's also a crossover cable that you can produce, which has slightly different wiring configurations. First things first, we need to remove about an inch or ideally 25 millimeters of the protective sleeving from the outside of the cables. So make sure you measure it fairly accurately. If, it's too, if you remove too much, um, you're going to have a problem making a proper connection. The crimpers very often come with a scoring device which will help cut through that outer sleeving. Um, a lot of people do prefer to use a sharp knife just to score it and then break through the last final filaments of the sleeving to produce the conductors underneath. So we need to straighten them out, make sure they're clean in good condition and of the right length. And then the next task is we need to untwist them. So they're twisted together to provide some uh, reduction in electromagnetic interference from the current that's flowing through the wires. Um, so they're twisted into pairs and we just need to untwist them, straighten them out, get them as straight as is possible. It's going to make life an awful lot easier when you actually go to put the connector on the end um, and crimp it together. So we've got them straightened out, not too bad, a few extra twists in there, they can be quite fiddly. You'll notice that the twists are of di different degrees on the different pairings to again reduce the interference that you can get between the two wires causing cross signals. So just make sure you get them as neat as possible. It is a bit fiddly, but it's time well spent. It will make life very much easier when you come to put that connector in position. Last pair. And yeah, they don't look too bad. You'll notice because the angle um, that the cable was cut originally, they're of different lengths. So the next task is to give them a quick haircut. Nice sharp cutters if you can. One of the downsides to using that particular kind of side cutter, and you can just make it out from the shot there, is the end tends to get flattened out a little bit because it was more crushed than cut. So now we have to push through the eight colored wires in their appropriate configuration as per the diagram you saw at the beginning and make sure they go right the way home. You can just see there's some little goldy colored connectors on the very end and the wires should have gone right underneath them so that when they're crimped down they'll make good contact. Notice that we need to get the surrounding insulation sleeve firmly into the RJ45 connector. That's important, that gives us a little bit of strain relief so that if there's any pulling on the cables, the actual conductors internally won't get yanked out. Just use the crimper tool, nice and firm, squeeze it right the way down and that will push those little pins actually into the wires and make the connection for you. It will also squeeze down the strain relief part um, and hold everything in nice and neatly. And there you can see that's well crimped in there. We put the little protective sleeve up over it as well just to make sure the cable's not going to fret as it's, it's pulled and twisted once it's been connected into the controller. Once you've made your cable, you've got your two ends on, it's important that you confirm that it is working functionally. This is also a test you can do on existing cables to see if there's a fault in any of the lines. So we're simply going to connect it up to the machine, put one end into each of the slots in there, and as you see we get two displays. So we get one display which is telling us there's a signal being sent, and then underneath it we can see that the signal is being received. So green tells us it's sent, red tells us it's been received at the other end, which tells us that it's a perfectly operational cable. The end one is for a ground, which in this particular instance we're not using. You can get uh, grounded terminals which have metal caps on the end of them um, and they will provide you with uh, that, that extra ground connection that we don't have here. And that's it done.
Thanks for watching.